In this video, we use the results that we've been building up about planar graphs and about uh, polyhedra to finally prove that there are only five platonic solids. Now, this was a fact um, with uh, Greek proof that, uh, you know, 2,000 years ago that this was true, that there were only five platonic solids. Now, this result uh, relied heavily on geometry. And again, this was a, a Greek proof, so it made use of uh, diagrams and, and uh, more than it did on algebra and things like this. Um, so yeah, in this video, we'll, we'll see a uh, graph theoretic proof that there are only five regular polyhedra. Um, so right before we, we begin, I want to remind us uh, of the tools that we have at our disposal, of the weapons that we have to attack this problem. So one is the Euler's uh, polyhedra formula, and we'll use this notation rather than the graph theoretic uh, formulation. B minus E plus F uh, is equal to two. I'm gonna refer to this formula as star. And then, uh, so uh, a matter of notation, when we're dealing with polyhedra, uh, it's customary to use the following notation. I'll let V sub K be the number of vertices. And I'll use, so we're kind of switching back and forth between geometric and graph theoretic language. VK, the number of vertices of degree K. So geometrically, this would be the number of vertices um, that have K faces meeting at that vertex. Um, and then FK will be the number of faces bounded by a K cycle. So geometrically, this would be the number of faces that are a K gone for some K. Um, and then, so now jumping to graph theory, uh, we know that uh, by arguments uh, used previously, that twice the number of edges, well, we could get this by summing up the number of vertices. That's our fundamental theorem, or first theorem of graph theory, K times V sub K. Um, and when we're dealing with polyhedron, polyhedra, we know that every vertex is at least degree three, because at least three may, uh, faces have to meet at each vertex. So here, this is K greater than or equal to three. We don't have to worry about vertices of degree one or two when dealing with polyhedra. We can also get the number of edges, or twice the number of edges, rather. Remember, every edge in a polyhedra um, was on the boundary of exactly two faces, so exactly two K cycles, and K cycles for K greater than or equal to three, right? We need at least three edges to make a cycle, and then I can add up the number of edges on each uh, K cycle. And if I add these all up over all the Ks, I get twice the number of edges. So I'm going to refer to this one as double star. And then I'm going to remind us of a fact, and this will launch us into the next, uh, uh, the next bit of this, is every planar graph, every planar graph, and hence polyhedra, hedron, has a vertex of degree at most five. So the first thing I'll establish is that not only does every uh, every polyhedron have a vertex of degree at most five, but also uh, it has a face, uh, every, every polyhedron has a face that's bounded by uh, a five cycle, uh, at most a five cycle. So that is the following theorem. At least one face of every polyhedron is bounded by a K cycle for some K. All right, so let's prove this proof. And this is gonna rely on those formulas I had before. Uh, so we'll, we'll assume to the contrary, this is false. What that means is in terms of our uh, notation here that F3, the number of faces bounded by a triangle is zero, the number of faces bounded by a four cycle is zero, and the number of faces bounded by a five cycle or pentagon is zero. And so what that means then is that, um, right, we, we can add up the number of edges to E is, right, going back to this, is, twi uh, is K times FK for K, greater than or equal to six now because we don't have any three, four, or five. 
Now, if k is greater than or equal to 6, we can say more. We can say that this is at least 6 fk for k greater than or equal to 6. And I'm going to pull that 6 out. So this is 6 times the sum of the fk's for k greater than or equal to 6. And if I just sum up all of the faces, well, that's, that's f, my number of faces. So this is 6 f. So f is just the total number of faces uh, from vi uh, previous videos. So we get, what does this mean? This means that the number of edges is at least three times the number of faces. Okay, but we can also add up the number of edges by looking at the vertices. So we know that 2e is k times v sub k for k greater than or equal to 3. We can do that sum. Now k is at least 3, as we've said for polyhedra. Uh, k is at least 3, so this is 3 times v sub k for k greater than or equal to 3. So this is 3 times the sum of all the v sub k's. And so this sum then is just the total number of vertices. So this is 3v, the total number of vertices. Okay, and now we go back to the Euler polyhedra formula, star. And that's that v minus e plus f is equal to 2. And so what this implies is we can write this if we multiply everything by 3. We get 3v minus 3e plus 3f is equal to 6. So I'll write this like this, 6 is equal to 3v minus 3e plus 3f. And now I'm going to use this, these bounds up here. So 3f is at most e. So that's this f here. And then 3v is equal to 2e. So 3v, that's 2e minus 3e. And then 3f was, um, was less than or equal to e. Uh, so this is just plus e. Okay, so what do I get? I get that 2e minus 3e plus e, well, that's, that's 0. So I have 6 is less than or equal to 0, and that is clearly a contradiction. And so this is impossible. We can't have no, uh, or rather we, we have to have at least one face uh, be bounded by either a three cycle, a four cycle, or a five cycle. Just like, right, right this is very similar to the fact uh, that every, the degree of every vertex um, has to be either uh, three, four, or five. Or, or rather, we have to have a vertex of degree um, um, at most five. So these are two uh, important results that we'll use. So a regular polyhedron, which the five platonic solids are, is a polyhedron whose faces are bounded by congruent regular polygons and whose polyhedral angle, angles are congruent. Uh, so what this means is that every vertex uh, has the same number of faces joined at each, there's the same number of uh, faces joined at each vertex. So that is uh, that V is equal to v sub t for some t. And each face, right, it's regular polygons. Uh, they're congruent regular polygons. So each face has the same number of vertices around it. So that is f, the total number of faces, is equal to v sub s for some s. Right, so all the vertices are the same degree and all the faces have the same number of vertices around them. Now we can say more by these two theorems, right? So the planar, every planar graph, there's a vertex of degree at most five. So that means T is in the set three, four, or five. And S, we just proved that uh, in a polyhedra, uh, there is some face, um, there's some face uh, that's bounded either by a three cycle, a four cycle, or a five cycle. And again, it's regular, so that means S must be 3, 4, or 5. And so this gives us a finite list of possibilities for these polyhedra. And we'll find by working through the cases that there are exactly 
Um, there are exactly five. All right. So let's let's begin our attack on the problem armed with these facts. So again, we'll let V, E, and F denote the number. Uh, right, we'll, we'll keep the same notation we've been using. I, I'm not going to define it again at the beginning of the proof here. And what I'm going to start with is I'm going to start with Euler's polyhedra formula, and I'm going to multiply everything by negative 4. So that tells me negative 8 is equal to 4E. Oops. Negative 8 is equal to 4E. Um, Right, it's v minus e plus f, so this is minus 4v minus 4f would be equal to negative 8. And I'm going to go ahead and split up this 4e. I'm going to write this as 2e because we know uh, that there's a certain sum that adds up to 2e. So I'm going to think of this like 2e um, minus 4v plus 2e minus 4f. So 2e we know, so now I'm invoking uh, double star from before. That was the sum of the vertices, right? Sum of k times v sub k uh, gives us the number, twice the number of edges, and um, k times uh, number of uh, faces gives us uh, 2e as well. So here I have 2e minus 4v. Uh, and so I'm going to write this 2e as the sum of Um, sum of k times v sub k, where k is greater than or equal to 3, minus 4v. 2e, I'm going to write this one using the faces. So this is k times f sub k for k greater than or equal to 3, uh, minus 4f. Now this v, actually I should... I'm going to rewrite this. This V I can think of as the sum of all the V sub Ks, K greater than or equal to 3, and the F I can think of as the sum of all the F sub Ks. This is going to let me combine some things. So what this tells me I can factor out a K minus 4 here and write this as the sum K greater than or equal to 3 of K minus 4 V sub K plus the sum k minus 4, f sub k, and that's k greater than or equal to 3 again. Okay, I'm going to call this formula uh, triple star. So there, uh, since g is regular, right, we're talking about a regular polyhedra, so my underlying graph then is regular, it means f is equal to f, uh, f sub s, and v is equal to v sub t. So for some S and T, and these are each in the set 3, 4, and 5. We have V is equal to V sub S, and F is equal to F. Uh, so let me actually say this, V sub T, I want to say. V sub T, and F is equal to F sub S for some S and T. Um, and then by double star again, so by double star, what this means that we're regular, we have that 2e is the sum of the v sub t's, but each v sub t, uh, or t times v sub t, uh, but they're all regular, right? v is equal to v sub t, so I'm just adding up one thing in the sum. And so 2e is equal to uh, t times v sub t, uh, sorry, equal to, and this is also equal to S times F sub S. Okay, so first I want to narrow down my possibilities. And in particular, I know, yeah, S and T are in this set. So what if both S and T are greater than or equal to 4? Um, Actually, wait, let me do one thing before I, I jump into that argument. Because now that we know that um, the sum, really, there's just one term in each one of these sums, right? V is equal to V sub T, F is equal to F sub S. Um, so this really becomes K minus 4 times V sub T 
plus k minus 4 times f sub s. So negative 8 is equal to this. And actually, I'm going to call this one, I'm going to call this one triple star, because this is really what we want to use for the regular polyhedron. Okay, so if s and t are both greater than or equal to 4, then we would have negative 8 by, by triple star is greater than or equal to 0. And that's a contradiction. So s is equal to 3 or t is equal to 3. And now we begin our casework. So s is equal to 3 or t is equal to 3. Oh, did I give myself another slide here? Yes, good, I did. So let's first investigate investigate s equal to 3. So case 1, so we have s could be 3, and then we could have t be 3, 4, or 5. So first case 1, I'll do s equal 3 and um, t equal 3. And so um, in triple star then, so triple star then, let me remind you what triple star was. Triple star was this, was this formula with the k minus fours. Oh, so I said k minus four here, sorry. It's good, I went back up here. We know what k is. This would be, sorry, this would be um, t minus four and s minus four. So right, so if I have s is equal to three, and t is equal to 3, then what do I get? I get negative 8 is negative v sub t. Negative 8 would be negative f sub 3 minus v sub t. And we know that, right, remember by, yeah, there's so many things to remember here. By double star, t v sub t is equal to s f sub s. So maybe it'll be enough to go back to these once just for this case, and then we'll, we'll sort of remember uh, as we go. Uh, so that is t v sub t equals s f sub s. If s and t are both 3, we have 3 v sub 3 equal to 3 f sub s. And 2 double star implies that 3 f sub 3 is equal to 3 v sub 3. Okay, uh, sorry, I have v sub t up there, this would be v sub 3. Okay, so solving this out, let's see, what do we get? Well, I could multiply. Uh, yeah, well, how do I want to exactly solve this out? I could multiply everything here. Uh, or, yeah, well, no, this tells me, right, this tells me f sub 3 is equal to v sub 3. And so this is, this is minus 2, I don't know, pick 1, f sub 3. And so that tells me that f sub 3, so this tells me, both of these tell me that f sub 3 is v sub 3 is um, 4. So which regular polyhedron is this? The number of faces is 4. The number of vertices is 4. This is the tetrahedron. And then there are some geometric considerations you have to make here for each of these cases that this is really the only one. Um, but we'll leave it there. This is the tetrahedron. So case two, S equal three and T equal four. All right, so by triple star, all right, this is the ones, you know, S minus four, T minus four. We have negative eight equals negative, uh, S is my number of faces, negative F sub S, and then uh, t equal 4, that term would go away in triple star. 
So here I just get negative 8 equals V sub 3. Sorry, I can drop the S now because I know what S is. S is 3. V sub 3. So that gives me that F sub 3 is equal to 8. So I have 8 faces. And then by double star, what do I get by double star? Um, we get that uh, we, have, we have that 3 F sub 3 is equal to 4 V sub 4. F sub 3 is 8. Uh, so this implies that we have 24 equals 4 V sub 4. And that gives me that V sub 4 is equal to 6. So we have 8 faces and 6 vertices. Um, so what's this one? Well, eight faces, this is the octahedron. Cool. All right, continuing along. Case three, we would have S equals three and P equals five. All right, we begin again with triple star. So again, we'd have minus eight equals negative F sub three, but now we have plus V sub five, right? Again, subtract four from each of these, multiply by V sub, uh, v sub T. And then by double star, we have that um, uh, three F sub three, is equal to five V sub five. So we need to combine these together. Um, this one isn't, isn't quite as clean, so we have to do a little bit of thinking here. <laughs> so how about we take this and conclude that V sub five is equal to F sub so 3 minus 8, and then using this down here, we have 3F sub 3 is equal to 5F sub 3 minus 40. Uh, so we have 40, or uh, yeah, 40 is equal to 2F sub 3, and that tells us that F sub 3 is equal to 20. So this one has 20 faces, and what we have three F sub three equals five V sub five. So that's 60 is equal to five F sub five. So V sub five is equal to 12. So this is 20 faces. This is the icosahedron. So pretty cool. And we'll continue along with our cases. So now we've exhausted when S is equal to three. Uh, remember, T has to be 3, 4, or 5, and so that exhausts all those cases. So now if T is equal to 3, we consider the same cases, S equal to 3, S equal to 4, S equal to 5. However, we've already done when both S and T are both 3, so we have two more cases left. So case, case 4 here would be when S is equal to 4 and T is equal to 3. Again, we'll use uh, triple star here. Triple star tells us that negative 8 would be equal to, so this would cancel out the F sub S's, so we would just have minus V sub 3. And this tells us that V sub 3 is equal to 8. By double star, we have that uh, 4 F sub S is equal to 3. Uh, sorry, F sub S, I, I keep making that mistake, I apologize. F sub S sub 4 and T is 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 8, so that's 24, and so this gives me that F sub 4 is equal to 6. So here we have 6 faces, 8 vertices, this is the cube. Finally, case 5, we'll have that S is equal to 5 and T is equal to 3. So again, by triple star, we have that minus 8 is equal to, um, so subtract 4, so F sub S, um, and then minus V sub 3. And again, I made this mistake where I didn't really plug in S. So my, uh, F sub 5 minus V sub 3. 
Uh, and then double star, what does double star tell me here? Double star tells me that uh, five F sub five is equal to three B sub three. And now we want to combine these things. Well, this tells me I'll do the same thing I did last time. The V sub three is F sub five uh, plus eight. So three V sub three would be F sub five plus 24. Subtract four, we get four. F sub five is equal to 24. So F sub five is equal to six. And then we have three, so that would be what, 30. So V sub three is equal to 10 in that case. Mm, something's not quite right there. Yeah, that doesn't, that doesn't give me what I want. All right, can you spot the mistake that I made? Yeah, F sub five minus V sub three. And then I have five V sub five equal to three V sub three. So I made some, some, some mistake here in solving uh, the system of equations. So I'm gonna back up to there. If you already caught my mistake, great. Um, right, so this tells me V sub 3 equals F sub 5 plus 8. Do you have 5 F sub 5 equals 3 V sub 3? Right, so that tells me this is 3. Oh, I, I would have had 2 F sub 5. I don't think I had that the last time. So this is plus 24. So that tells me, right, 2 F sub 5 is equal to 24. That tells me F sub 5 is equal to 12. Good. F sub 5 is equal to 12. Um, so that's 60 over here divided by 3. So V sub 3 is equal to 20. So 12 faces, uh, 20 vertices. This is the uh, dodecahedron. And we have now run through all the cases and found there are exactly five regular polyhedra. That concludes the proof, and we see a nice graph theoretic explanation that there are only five regular polyhedra. Um, now, I'll, I'll leave you with one last consideration here. There are regular polyhedra in other dimensions. This is in three dimensions. If you uh, jump up to four dimensions, each one of these has an analog in four dimensions, but there's actually an extra one in uh, the fourth dimension. So there's six regular polyhedra in four dimensions. Um, so just an interesting um, interesting little uh, extra bit for you. All right. Sorry, this video was long. I'll see you next time.